We are an island people in Britain, and as far back as history can recall, we braved the dangers of the ocean. For thousands of years, the sea took its toll of seafarers around our coast, until in 1824, a national lifeboat service was organized. In just over 130 years, more than 80,000 people have been rescued from the cruel sea. Through trial and error, the modern lifeboat has been evolved. A craft that can roll over completely, but which cannot sink. Capable of travelling at nine knots for a range of 300 miles, and equipped with every modern rescue device. Although the lifeboat today is modern in every respect, many of the processes involved in building it are carried out by hand. Craftsmen who have been building boats for 50 years are entrusted with this responsible task. skills Floyd that have been handed down from generation to generation. There have been many changes in design. At one time lifeboats were lined with cork for greater buoyancy. But today the lifeboat is divided into many watertight compartments and each compartment is equipped with wooden air cases like these which are tailored to the hull and covered with calico. The craftsmen who work on lifeboats need patience as well as skill. In the hull alone there are over 5,000 screws which must be tightened individually. Shoddy workmanship has no place in the building of a lifeboat. There must be no weak link in the chain of more than 150 lifeboats strategically stationed around the coasts of Great Britain and Ireland. And what of the lifeboat's crew, that team of specialists qualified in the work of rescue and willing to run the risks? Manning a lifeboat is an emergency, not a full-time job. So what is needed is a pool of volunteers large enough to ensure that no matter when the call comes, at any hour of the day or night, there will always be enough hands available to put to sea. Only one member of each boat's crew is employed full-time, the motor mechanic. Of the other crew members, many are fishermen to whom wind and wave are familiar adversaries, and some are landsmen, but all have the sea in their blood. The black cone hoisted to the gaff at the Coast Guard station gives storm warning. And that's why, from many Coast Guard stations, a constant watch is kept not only for the ship in distress, but for the non-swimmer who's been carried out of his depth, for the inexperienced holiday maker who... He spotted something. He's ringing the secretary of the local lifeboat station. When there's an incident, he's the man who decides to launch. The Coast Guard passes his message and the secretary takes it down and quickly decides to launch. The order is given, fire maroon, a signal that this is an emergency, life is at stake, the signal that every lifeboatman within hearing will recognize as a call to immediate action. Whatever the lifeboatman is doing, he can be playing darts, asleep in bed, having his tea, digging spuds, or perhaps just about to make the best sail of his life. Even the fisherman mending his nets must down tools and join his boat at the double. He doesn't know the facts, who is in trouble, how or why, but he does know that this is an emergency, maybe a matter of life and death. What's happened? Where? Who? But that doesn't really matter. Whoever it is out there is dependent on us now, on our seamanship, our guts, the speed with which we get off the mark. Oil skin's on. It's fair enough at the moment, but there's no telling how long we'll be out, and it can blow up quickly around our coasts. Put them on, we'll be glad of them before long. We're bound to ship some spray. Sea boots, life jackets, and we're ready. The 
launching of a lifeboat is a routine, a drill as precise as the firing of a gun. It has to be, to eliminate mistakes, to save time. Take out the batten and open the doors, that's the first thing. Next, shift the chocks fore and aft that keep her on an even keel when she's in the boathouse. And then canter. You see, when a lifeboat's not in use, she still has to be maintained. And it's easier to do that, to check the machinery and perhaps overhaul it when she's level, on an even keel. But to launch her, she must be tilted into the same angle as the slipway. The wheel operates the tipping cradle which will line her up and allow her weight to take her into the water. Start the engine. Let go the securing chains. Many calls on a lifeboat may be false alarms involving many hours of fruitless searching. But once called out, a lifeboat will ensure all is well before returning to its station. All set to go now. And away she goes. Peter at the wheel, and all other crew members at their various stations. Including the youngest member of the crew, Bob. Conditions are just fine, and a nod from the coxswain, the man who knows, indicates that all is under control. We're looking for a capsized dinghy and two men in the drink. A needle in a haystack has nothing on this. Look out aft, eyes skinned port and starboard. Look out forward, constantly searching for a tiny speck in the limitless sea. Still in the balance. Two lives. Where? Two miles east of South End Pier and drifting fast. That was the position given. Not far off it now. Mustn't overshoot. There they are. We'll speed ahead. I'll be in time. Boat hook ready. Stand by fodder to fish them out. Quickly now. Not men, they're boys. What happened? A sudden squall, too big a sail and no time to reef it. Well, that's one way of learning how much canvas you can carry. Not the safest, though. Lucky they were seen. Lifting a man or boy from the water needs quite a little skill and strength, especially if they're injured and unable to help themselves. an emergency, not on a large scale, not a desperate one, but still with two lives in the balance. And yet there's been no unusual efficiency. It is the business of the lifeboatman to save lives as expertly as possible and without fuss. 
and so they do. So they have came into being in 1824. The merchants seem peace or at war, soldier, sailor, airman, yachtsman and holiday maker. These in their tens of thousands have owed their survival to the lifeboats and their crews. It's the rescue of all. It is his pride to keep watch and ward for those in peril on the sea. Thank you.